Good afternoon to everyone. I would like to thank the organizers for the possibility to be here and uh, share our experience in CDG diagnostics in the Czech Republic. In our Prague lab, we established the diagnostics of CDG 13 years ago. Uh, during this period, nearly 4,000 samples of suspected cases were sent to our hospital. 74 patients screened for CDG were positive, which comprise 2% uh, of investigated samples, plus additional 11 patients with limb girdle muscular dystrophy caused by Oman glycosylation defects, which is not recognizable by CDG screening. Isoelectric focusing of serum transferrin and apolipoprotein C3 uh, were used as a screening tool. Uh, this is the list of selected methods available in our PRAC lab. Uh, there is no lipid link oligosaccharide analysis uh, in cultivated fibroblast feasible in the Czech Republic, but we have very good cooperation with Leven in Belgium. Phosphomanomutase and phosphomanoisomerase enzyme activities are routinely measured in our PRAC lab in cultivated fibroblast and also in isolated lymphocytes. And regarding the molecular genetic studies, we used direct sensor, but, uh, but also uh, targeted and whole exome sequencing techniques. Just for illustration, these pictures uh, show uh, hypoglycosylation of serum transferrin, investigation of all glycoprotein cellulation states in cultivated fibroblasts, and uh, analysis of structure of Golgi apparatus in cultivated fibroblast in a healthy subject compared to uh, patients suffering from combined and an all glycosylation defects with disruption of Golgi. Uh, as I mentioned in my second slide, uh, we have diagnosed since 2001 85 CDG patients. Uh, and uh, the most frequent, of course, is the PM2 CDG, comprising 20 Czech uh, patients. Uh, PM2 CDG group is followed by a quite large group of limb girdle muscular dystrophies due to uh, alpha dystroglycan glycosylation defects. Uh, next generation sequencing techniques uh, were used in six families and we provided for five families prenatal diagnostics with good results. Uh, from our 20 PM2 CDG patients, two patients died at the age of 9 and 12 months. Uh, the lifespan of living 18 uh, PM2 CDG patients ranged from one and a half to 23 years. The clinical presentation or clinical phenotype of our 20 PM2 CDG patients is typical compared to more than 800 patients described in the literature. In seven uh, PM2, uh, PM2 CDG patients, atypical fatty pads and inverted nipples disappeared during childhood, which highlight necessity for early diagnostics. Low level, uh, low, le low level uh, of clotting factor 11 and combined coagulopathy were present in all our patients, but in two with improvement in adolescence. Hepatopathy was noted in more than two thirds of patients. The residual phosphomanomutase uh, enzyme activity measured in cultivated fibroblast and isolated lymphocytes varies substantially in our patient from 1 to 30 percent of mean controls. In one patient, exceptionally high residual enzyme activity was documented, reaching 69 percent. However, what is important to stress that there was no any correlation uh, between the residual enzyme activity and the severity of clinical phenotypes of our uh, patients. The genotypes of our patients uh, are provided in the table on the right side of the slide. We described the oldest known at that time uh, patient with RFT1 CDG with prolonged survival with only mild hearing impairment and milder coagulopathy. There was no failure to thrive, but on the other hand, obesity. The intermediate product of lipid link oligosaccharide accumulated, and there was, no, there was virtually no fully assembled oligosaccharide precursor in our fibrillar studies. In this patient, two novel mutations 
in ALG8 gene coding glucosal transferase 2 were noted or found. Uh, glucosal transferase 2 uh, deficiency leads to inefficient addition of the second glucose residue onto the lipid link oligosaccharide, uh, oligosaccharide precursor. The presence of seizures, cortical atrophy, cerebral hypoplegia, in addition to optic nerve atrophy in our patient, clearly showed central nervous system impairment, which was in quite strong contrast to previous observation describing this subtype of CDG as a non-neurological one. In these two patients, another very rare subtype of CDG syndrome were recognized in the Czech Republic. The patient with DPAGT1 CDG, the clinical presentation of limb girdle muscular weakness without oculofacial involvement plus typical EMG finding, which means decrement on repetitive nerve stimulation, was compatible with the diagnosis of limb girdle congenital myasthenic syndromes and the girl profits on uh, cholinesterase inhibitor treatment. The second patient uh, phenotype fits well in uh, to cerebrooculal syndrome described in nearly 20 patients worldwide. Multiple exostosis glycogen storage disease-like phenotype, intellectual disability with autistic behavior, hydrocephalus and pachygyria, or only limb girdle muscular dystrophy without any brain malformations uh, were noted in other Czech CDG patients. Uh, this is a link to uh, web pages dedicated to Czech families with CDG. One patient's mother, which, is, uh, which participate in this meeting, built these pages only a few months ago. And I would like to thank her, uh, thanks uh, my colleague for the substantial help, and you for the attention. Thank you.